Hey, how's it going everybody? Portuguese Joe coming at you from Pioneer Gunworks. Just want to say thank you very much for purchasing a Pioneer Gunworks short stroke kit and thank you for watching our installation video here. What you're about to see is the necessary steps and stages for proper installation of a Pioneer Gunworks short stroke kit into your lever action 66 or 73 rifle. It does not show every single minute by minute stage of the installation. That would have made it a bit long. Instead, the video leads to about 17 minutes and does show the most proper installation, in my professional opinion, of how to get the biggest bang for your buck out of your PGW short stroke kit. So I'm going to basically point out the necessary tools and arrangements that you're gonna need to get to where you want to be. And of course, there more than likely will be a lot of questions from a lot of you that have just never gone through this type of process before. In that event, feel free, contact us um, through our contact page, either give us an email or give us a phone call on typical business hours, nine to five West Coast time. If we are not available to pick up the phone, definitely drop us a message or an email. Somebody will get back to you as soon as possible. At any rate, once again, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. We appreciate your patronage. Have a great day. Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Joe Alves, aka Portuguese Joe from Pioneer Gunworks, here today with an installation video of our Pioneer Gunworks Short Stroke Kit. Simple video, simple to understand. We tout that you do not need to be a gunsmith in order to install this kit, and I'm about to prove it to you, showing you some of the simple procedures and stages in which to get down the timing correctly to ensure proper running rifle with a nice short lever throw. The stages are going to include the majority of what you need to know in order to get through the timing of the kit without the 100% run through because to be honest, it gets a little bit tedious over time and you just don't need to see the majority of every single run of material removal until we get to where we need. So what I'm gonna be showing you is basics of the installation and material removal with our standard short stroke kit, brand new one, never used, and a used one that's already been timed for my personal 1866 Yellow Boy, as you can see here. The rest of this stuff are just the basic tools that you're going to need in order to install the PGW Short Stroke Kit. A Dremel tool, pretty invaluable in the event that you do not have a milling machine. Good, solid, sturdy hand files, pretty much all you need. Obviously one with a better grip than I have here. This one's well used and well worn. Um, you're gonna want one with just straight one in, uh, sided striations, not the cross striations. I believe they call those bastard files, but this is just a standard hand file that you're gonna need. Um, you can either go back and forth kind of like a saw, or you can uh, you know, just push one in with pressure, lift it, push, do your thing. I'll show you a little bit more as time passes by. Then you've got some other pieces that you can use here. This is a diamond filament cutting tool for the Dremel tool. You can use that, once again, well-worn, well-used. And this is just a standard sanding drum, little drum here. Um, I think mine is about a 60 grit. You can get, you know, a little bit lighter. I would probably advise uh, 80, anything over 60, I don't advise, just a little bit too heavy. Um, or I guess you could use 80. The, the, the rule of thumb here is that you definitely want to use your patience when the material removal portion comes along. Obviously, you're going to want your rifle. Uh, this touches base on some important issues here. When it comes to installing a Pioneer Gunworks short stroke kit, there are only two rifles that our short stroke kit will properly install into, and that is the 1866 Uberti Winchester replica, the yellow boys you can see here, or the 1873 Winchester replica from Uberti. But they have to be the modernized versions in order to ensure proper installation and usage. Now, what do I mean by modernized version? Well, if you look below on either an 1866 or an 1873 rifle, you'll see on the bottom of the lower tang assembly will be a serial number with a small W in front of the number. If your rifle has that W, never fear, the coast is clear. If it does not have a W, you have what's considered an older rifle or an old rifle, a non-modernized rifle. The modernized rifles, the modernized Uberti Winchester replica rifles, are the rifles that we uh, basically modeled all of our uh, modified parts after for proper fitting. If you do not have a gun with a W in front of the serial number, 
we cannot guarantee and will not guarantee that the short stroke kit will install properly. In fact, I, I know from experience that they most of the time, 95% of the time, will not. I have had people call me up and say I was able to finagle it and get it to work, but there's no guarantee. We even give you a liability warning on the website. If you buy this and you have an older gun, we don't recommend you purchase this kit, okay? So that out of the way, uh, the only other thing that you're definitely going to need is a uh, gunsmith's screwdriver. Um, doesn't have to be a gunsmith screwdriver, but that's what I use with some interchanging heads. And one last thing that I'm definitely gonna stress, get yourself a proper caliber dummy round. Since my gun is a 38 Special, I'm using 38 um, Starline Brass. You got yourself a spent primer. Um, and of course, no incendiary powder on, on the inside of the, uh, of the bullet. You would definitely want to make sure that uh, even if you have a spent primer, do not have um, any powder in that, uh, that round. This is going to be imperative for having later on towards the end of the, um, uh, the timing of the kit and as we go along to properly time it. Because without this, we're definitely not going to know if it's timed properly for the second stage of the timing. So, um, the only other tool that I can definitely recommend is... A bench vise. Boom. Right there. Bench vise is invaluable, especially if you do not have a milling machine. Step one is going to be the actual trimming of the material from the bottom end of the lifter arm. Now, what do I mean by the bottom end? The bottom end is this little portion right here. When you look in the bottom of your gun, as you can see, the lever has a flat portion right here that presses up against this portion of the lifter arm in order to engage the lifter arm, as you can see. That's the portion that we're gonna wanna remove material from, right there. So, two ways of doing this. You can either, well, three ways actually. You can either use the Dremel tool, you can use the hand file, or you can use the milling machine. For today's purpose, we're going to use the milling machine. Okay, so what you can see that I have done here is taken our lifter arm, flipped it upside down, and put it into the vise of my milling machine. I have an end mill that's about a half an inch in diameter. Um, you can use one wider, you can use one smaller, but you want one that at least fits the width of the portion that you're cutting. What I did was I touched base with the portion that I'm cutting, interfaced it, zeroed it out, as you can see there, Pulled it back past the cutting portion of the lifter arm. Then what I'm going to do is bring it down to ten thousandths of an inch at a time. Reason I'm suggesting you start with ten thousandths of an inch at a time is this is a pretty reasonable amount of material removal. You definitely don't want to start with any more than that unless you're pretty learned and fairly experienced at the installation of these kits. And obviously if you're using a milling machine, it's a quick amount of material removal at a time. So you definitely want to instill a little bit of patience on the, at this point. Okay, so once you've got that set, a little cutting fluid here, start up your milling machine. So I'm not going to bother going through the actual cutting process. It's pretty self-explanatory. At this point, you want to take off 10 thousandths of an inch at a time worth of material go back and then try to affix it for proper installation. So we'll go back and forth basically, and I'll kind of give you a little bit of a better explanation of what to do at that point. So from this point on, uh, like I said, we've taken our first 10,000 of an inch off of the portion, the under portion here of the lifter arm. Um, for those of you that do not have the milling machine, like I said, you can make this still just as simple. Simply stick this in your bench vise right here. Okay, this is the point where the patience comes in. If a bench vise and a hand file are literally all that you have, this is gonna take a little bit of time for you. And I'm just gonna let everybody know at this point, this will take a little bit of time. But we have had numerous customers tell us that yes, they were able to properly install it perfectly without overtiming the kit. Now, that leads to one very important issue that I will be discussing with you in just a little bit here. One thing I want to say is that if you are going to be using a bench vise with a hand file, you definitely want to try and keep things on a horizontal plane, perfect 180 degrees, okay? Nothing too much this way, nothing too much that way. The, the importance of keeping this angle true 
with a flat horizon is pretty important. You don't want it to skew downward like this in the case that somebody's just using one hand or they're a little bit heavy handed or they start getting kind of tired after a while. That's the importance of using something like a Dremel tool. You can put a little drum in there like this one and just kind of buzz it back and forth like that, whatever way works best for you. So if you end up overtiming the kit, not the end of the world, it just means that you've taken too much material from the underside of the, of the lifter arm right here, which basically just means that the carrier is not going to rise to its top position in order for the bolt to push the bullet into the chamber. Again, not the end of the world. The, um, uh, the lifter arms can actually be repaired, a little TIG weld right here, or if it's in the terms of just something that's been whittled away to nub, of course, you can always buy a brand new lifter arm from us, but in most times, these can be repaired if overtimed. If you want to keep the stock carrier that comes with your gun, you are going to have to modify the stock brass carrier. And there is a video on the website that shows you how to do that, so I'm not gonna get into that right now. What I'm gonna do right now, though, is briefly just show you the uh, proper install installation here. After you've taken off the material, install the carrier, install the arm, Put in the lever, a little bit more cumbersome on an 1866. And there is the standard lever, okay? And there's the standard lifter arm, okay? So everything's working. Put in the left side link. Install with the left side link. I flip the gun over, make sure you put the pin into the other link. Then at this point, what I like to do is hold the gun at about a 45 degree angle up on my workbench, as you can see here. So what I've done here is I've taken the rifle and I put it at a 45 degree angle up on my workbench. You can see it's uh, what they call cowboy port arms. Okay, you've got the uh, barrel end of the rifle up at a 45 degree angle. This is imperative at checking the timing. I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Okay, we've got the kit installed. Um, not properly timed yet, but we're going along the process. We've already taken 10 thousandths of an inch, theoretically, off of the lifter arm, however way you want to do it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the lever, lever's free as you can see, and I'm going to throw it forward. We're going to watch the bolt retract as the carrier comes up. Now if the carrier, the top of the carrier, touches the bottom of the bolt as the bolt is retracting, before the bolt has a chance to retract fully into the frame, then the timing is not yet complete. What we then need to do at that point is continue removing material from the underside of the lifter arm at 10 thousandths of an inch at a time until we get to the point where the bolt face and the top of the carrier on its upward travel barely miss, like that. At this point, what we need to do is check the second stage of the timing. This is the portion where that dummy round comes into play. What I've done is I've put the dummy round, as you can see, boom, let me expose it just a little bit, into the carrier. I've just seated it in there, and then what I've done is I've actually taken the gun and kind of cockeyed it just a little bit at an angle in order to ensure that being at an 1866, it does not have as much retaining space, especially with the side plate off, in order to keep it in the carrier. So that's why you want to put it up at cowboy port arms there at a 45 degree angle ensure that the round is at the lowest point in the back of the carrier. Now, as I'm throwing the lever forward, you can see the bolt is retracting. The carrier is going to come up. That little tab on the bottom face of the bolt right in there, we want to make sure that the bottom of that misses the back end of the dummy round as the carrier is coming up. It just barely hits it by about, oh, I'd say a good five, in between five to ten thousandths of an inch. Okay, so everything was going good with the lifter arm, other than when that little tab on the bottom face of the bolt right there interfaced with the back of the round. Right here. Okay, definitely not what you want while it's in the carrier. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our lifter arm here, our standard lifter arm, and we're going to keep removing material from this area. Ten thousandths of an inch at a time is key, folks. Now, especially if you have the capability of measuring out this, uh, the space in your milling machine. If you do not, hand file, Dremel tool. 
pretty much the way to go, folks. So what is the end result that we're looking for here? We're looking for the end result to being a perfect synergy, like I said, where the bolt retracts, the carrier goes up, everything is moving and grooving in uh, perfect synergy where the carrier goes uh, up and the bolt goes back without touching each other. The tab on the face of the bolt does not interface the back of the round. That way, when the springs on the side of the gun do their job, the carrier stays up, you pull back on the lever towards you, the bolt pushes the round into the chamber, boom, everything is working in perfect synergy. Okay, so we're back into the position at a 45 degree angle, rifle is completely put back together with the side plates fixed, loading gate is in place, keep that round in. The 38 round is back in there. The one thing I do want to emphasize is when you are checking the first or the second stage of the timing, make sure that the second notch on the hammer is fixed. You want the hammer completely open. I know most of you already know that, most of you already saw that, but I just want to make sure that everybody realizes um, that a hammer has to be open to ensure just the proper smoothness of, uh, of adjusting the timing. So, we got everything back together, the springs are in place, dummy round is in the carrier, and uh, this is actually being tested with the super kit that I had originally installed in my gun, just to show you the synergy of the movement with the second stage of the timing completed. As you can see, the round is already coming up. There is no touching on the lower tab on the face of the bolt. As simple as that. Clearly, it's a little bit quicker than the actual full-on process if you were to do everything on your own, depending on what kind of tools you have, like I said hand file, um, proximate time. I've heard uh, between uh, you know myself and a lot of customers is probably anywhere between 45 minutes to an hour. If any of you have any burning questions on uh, installation of the Pioneer Gunworks Short Stroke Kit, um, past the point of this video, please let me know. Um, I do want to clear up a few things before I uh, end up the video here. Number one, the installation for the standard kit I have here or the super kit that I have in my gun here is exactly the same. 100% the same. No differences. With all of our kits that we ship nationally, you will get fully illustrated instructions. Um, like I said, they are not confined to an 1866 or a 73. You can do one or the either. Um, the uh, also not caliber specific. So whether it's a 38, a 45 long cold, 4440, 3220, anything like that, as long as it lies within the specs of an 1866 or 73 Uberti Winchester replica, and it is a modernized rifle with a W in front of that serial number, you're pretty much good to go. These kits are not straight drop-ins, but a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, proper reading through of the instruction manual, understanding what it is that you're working with. This is a firearm, guys. Ensure your safety and just the overall fun of the usage of your firearm by making sure you take the time to install these properly. We do not tout that you need to be a gunsmith to install our kit. It's a guarantee from me personally. If any of you have any questions whatsoever, please give us a call at Pioneer Gunworks. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it informative.